So, uh, first of all, hi everybody. Thank you. Um, this is my this is my talk. Uh, so uh, you pretty much covered it in the about me section. This is a picture of my cow that looks like, sorry, dog that looks like a cow rather, uh, being particularly derpy with her face on the leg of the recliner. <laughs> um, so I work at Car Gurus, um, great company to work for. We're definitely hiring. If anybody's interested, it's we use on the front end uh, React, TypeScript, um, get a lot of autonomy. It's a great place to be. Um, because I've been developing React professionally for like five years now, I pretty much, I love to code in my free time, but I have a rule that even though I actually love React and I think it's a great tool, I don't do like my, my personal coding cannot bear any resemblance to my work stuff, um, which has kind of what brought me to static site generation. So, um, I spent a lot of time writing programs that are, that, you know, that write HTML. And, um, so I'm going to start, I guess, by talking about some of the tools that I use. Um, the first one I use a lot, this is, uh, a, a command line application called Pandoc, um, which is for converting between markdown formats. Um, and it is great. It'll convert between several different flavors of markdown to HTML. It'll convert Microsoft Word documents, CSV files. Um, I mean, it's a, you can look at their website. It's a long list. And um, I started using Pandoc when I first started doing this because I was looking for JavaScript solutions for, for parsing my markdown. And, you know, there's a lot out there. But at the end of the day, Pandoc is, is so reliable and so readily available on every platform. Um, and, and I don't do all my coding in JavaScript either. So, you know, I can still use the same tools if I, if I switch languages. Um, it's a, it's a truly cross platform app. I guess I just said this part. <laughs> um, what I really like about it is that you can either convert your markdown to either just a snippet or to a standalone page. So, it, you know, in many cases, um, for a really simple website, you know, a one liner, bash script that calls pandoc might be enough to to be your your quote unquote static site generator um and you can customize the output um if you are willing to write a little lua which is a very you know javascripty type language or close enough anyway in my opinion um you know very easy to write custom renders in it the the cons of it are you know once you're calling out to the command line for you know any kind of um when you're calling this stuff out to the command line versus living in JavaScript type land exclusively, you know, there are complications. You lose that safety of being within the ecosystem. You have those command line options you have to learn. But otherwise, honestly, Pandoc is an amazing piece of software. Um, another one you've probably heard of is SQLite 3 or SQLite 3, I think is the real pronunciation. Um, I use this a lot because, you know, one of the hard parts about rolling your own static site generator of any kind is, is how am I going to organize everything? And databases do make a lot of sense. Um, SQLite 3 in particular, it's installed on every computer. Um, it's, it's a single file database. So, you know, every database you make is a literal file that can be in, in version control. Um, they even recommend using it as a file format. Um, and there's no server required. So it works on very low powered machines. Um, and, uh, <clears throat> You can configure it to output JSON if you want, which makes it really easy to integrate into um, into you know Jamstack type apps. If you're building your HTML, you know you, uh, at some point you're going to need to take that data and turn it into JavaScript uh, into JSON. And the fact that SQLite can do that uh, is great. Um, and the test coverage on SQLite is like legendary. They committed themselves to like this super high standard, and uh, you've never used software tested quite this well. The downside is, of course, you know, if you're making SQL call, SQL calls by, you know, writing them out, that, of course, is not as fun as using an ORM. Um, SQLite doesn't, isn't typed by default. They've just introduced typing as an option. But, you know, everything you can say a column is, a, is, is, a, is you know, uh, one thing and then put another thing into it. And the, you know, SQLite is happy to, to store your data um, no matter what you typed it as. Um, and depending on the computer you're running it on, there may be old versions installed, and that can be annoying to, to, to work with. And then the last thing, of course, is Node.js. Um, so I do a lot, you know, when I first started building static sites, a lot of it was shell scripting. And then, you know, it really, once you have to get in any string manipulation, date manipulation, um, you know, handling async stuff, you really just being in JS land is, is very nice. 
which brings us to like kind of the app that I'm going to demonstrate here. So to take it back a little bit, my goal was to build something. I wanted to be able to interact with my app via email. And, you know, there's a lot of good and bad things about email. But um, at the end of the day, you know, I, I wanted something that I could post like, like, for example, if I want to put a website up with pictures of my kids for my family to see, I want my mom to be able to comment on that without having to, you know, learn to use a new user interface. Um, and email is great. Everybody has email. Every phone comes with email. It's completely federated. You've got an account. Um, it works great with spotty internet connections. I can send an email with no internet and know that it's going to, um, you know, eventually make its way through the pipes once I get online. Um, and by the same token, if my server stops working, you know, my emails can queue up and they'll all be there waiting for me when I get it working again. Um, and the other thing that's nice is that pretty much every email client on every phone and computer has a WYSIWYG, gener uh, WYSIWYG, uh, uh, built into it. So, you know, when my mom does leave a comment on my site, uh, you know, she can bold text, italics, you know, layouts, lists, sorted lists, unordered lists, whatever you want. Downsides, it's not very secure. Identity can be spoofed and it can be slow. So you know, anything we're going to build this way, I, I, I don't even know if you would ever use this in production or anything important, but anything we're going to build this way is going to have to work slowly. You know, people are not sending this email and seeing their comment come down the pipe. So at the end of the day, here's what I want to do. All right, I want to let users respond to blog comments via email. Then my script, which could be running on my laptop or a Raspberry Pi or a VPS or whatever, pulls the emails by, via POP3, saves them to my database. And then the build script uh, will rebuild any pages that have had new comments added to them push them up to GitHub where Netlify rebuilds them. And this slide deck that you're looking at actually is um, the demonstration of this technique. So if you were to scan any of these QR codes, uh, it does take a few minutes for it all to go through the pipes. So, uh, you know, you might want to come back in a few minutes, but your comments that you email will eventually appear. Uh, please don't send anything that will get me put on a watch list or anything like that. Um, so yeah and then i thought i might take a minute and just show kind of how that's all working if i think i'm kind of flying through we're pretty good on time right um so basically uh we we fetch our emails so uh in that case you'll see here i'm using pop3 to fetch the emails um see uh can we ask questions yes please i wish you would <laughs> yeah so um i think i might have missed it but like what what kind of app is this this isn't any kind of app this is this is those those technologies that i was taught it's no js um with yeah. TypeScript, but you know there's not i'm not using gatsby or um yeah well, I guess what I was asking was you said something about like uh, enabling like your mom to comment on stuff. That's what I was wondering if that it was I was wondering if that was a thing or you were kind of being um, hypothetical. No, no. I mean, that's absolutely a thing. And this this oh, yeah. uh, this slide deck that I'm using, if you were to scan this QR code or or click the email link, um, your comment would have it would, it would open up your email client on your device and your comment will eventually um, appear there. I'm doing it. Yeah, do it. Do it. Just don't, you know, it does take like, you know, so let's see my script checks every 90 seconds and then for the emails and then builds it. And then it takes, you know, another probably like minute and a half for it to all go through the, uh, the Netlify pipeline. Um, and I could even, you know, I'm running it on a VPS, so I could even serve it directly from the VPS, but I figured it was more in the spirit of things to, to do it via, um, Netlify. So, um, you know, the big thing about doing things this way is it really gives you a lot of freedom because I'm actually banging out, you know, I'm having my program write HTML, but at the same time, you know, you could just as easily output, you know, um, 
I don't know, you could probably output React or, or, or solid JS components. You know, certainly if you're industrious enough, writing a Pandoc renderer to output those things would be easy. Or, um, you know, in my case where I'm just sort of jamming HTML strings together, um, you know, writing code that writes code is, is weirdly satisfying when it all works. The idea with this system now is that I can actually just add another, uh, another markdown file to my my slides and then the next time it builds it will uh check again any wow. any comments that come through um let's see i did send a comment an email i have no idea where it went yeah so yeah. was it which page is it just putting it all together page yeah i think so i just said like hi sure well, let's see uh let's see when it builds yeah, I was trying to use the QR code too. It, 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 I can open my email client, but it doesn't seem to have any recipient or anything filled out. Is that Nick? Did it, did you oh, have a recipient so the, first time, the first time I did it, uh, cr it cra My email client crashed, which like mm. might. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know why that would be. Yeah, um, that was. I think that was just on my side or whatever. What's kind of cool is the, the way that I'm parsing the email addresses too. I don't know if you guys know this, but Gmail has a feature where you can put anything after a plus sign and it doesn't change the, uh, it still goes to your email. So mm -hmm. this this is how it knows which uh, which comment. There we go. Oh, look at that. We got a comment. Oh, this is nice. so cool. Wait, how did it get my full name? Because <laughs> that's on your email. That's what it says. I get, okay. Your I get phone it. client must automatically create a signature or something yeah 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 this won't just literally long. rendering that in the site that's so cool What's that? so it's literally rendering the 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 first and last name from the client in in the browser or in the in the site that's so cool yeah yeah when you request an email via uh via pop three um you know the here, hold on let me see if I can do you have um Ian, do you happen to ha uh, show the actual file where that's actually like, um, where that's actually occurring on your repo? Let's see here. It should be in there. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. So, your Popo is the uh, yet another Pop3 library that I'm using for my Pop3 interaction. Uh, let's see. Dot connect client dot retrieve all. Um, yeah, you know, I guess I. No, I got to find where this message type is. It might be simpler for me to just change the screen share to be on my ID instead of my. Uh, hold on a second here. I mean, from like a first glimpse, I can kind of understand what's happening in this in this file uh, based on some of the uh, the lines that I I'm seeing in the in the repo. Yeah. Okay. So here's the mess. This is the message. Can you guys see the IDE here? Yeah. Yeah, and that's in the that's in the library. Yeah, this is in the Apopo library. So this is literally just the the, the format that it returns my um, emails in, and so that name that you're seeing is in the uh, the from name which you know you can look at the actual response from a, a pop through email request but um uh yeah um i just assume use the library in this case because it's kind of a pain to parse all that by hand what i really like about the system too is that you know rather than have a server that's exposed to the internet this entire thing only interacts with the internet through the, you know, checking the email and then pushing the results up to GitHub, which means it can be behind my personal firewall. Um, it can run, you know, really, I mean, the computer could even be off anytime that you're not intentionally building the site, say for a personal, you know, tech blog, maybe you really don't need to compile your comments more than once every day or so, right? Um, so there's a tremendous amount of, of safety in, in having things not be exposed. Um, and, you know, even though email is kind of transparent by default, you know, if, for example, that email address is ever compromised, it's literally just changing an environment variable to use a brand new email address. And the site will just keep plugging along um, as it currently does. So 
what I love about this is yes. I'm always built like I'm always interested in making random stuff for communities that don't require authentication or whatever. Exactly. Like I like I'm a big gamer and I I made an app for my gaming community and I was tr the I was just harnessing information from volunteers, and then I had to ask some people to get on Discord. I had to ask for emails to add to Google Drive, and, and no one wanted to make accounts for anything. Exactly. I just had a WhatsApp group change over to Signal, and I know that Signal is better. But I'm like, come on, now I got to have, not only do I have to have two apps on my phone, but people are still going to post in the WhatsApp group too. So, right. you know, um, yeah, you know, I, I build a lot of this kind of stuff because I don't know, I think it's fun. It, it's, um, I got really frustrated using using Gatsby when I tried using it in 1.0 and I just haven't gone back to any of the big static site generators. Um, yeah. And truthfully, I'd love to figure out a way to integrate this with React. You know, um, I don't know what that would look like. Maybe instead of compiling HTML, I compile JavaScript objects or, you know, React components. I don't really know what it would look like, but there's definitely a, a path to it. Um, and depending on how good you are with databases, you can really get fancy with your relations too. you know, make a, a page per person. So you can see all their questions or have, you know, threads where you respond to each comment. Um, I didn't go that far for the sake of this talk, but it's certainly, mm -hmm. you know, the path to doing so seems pretty straightforward to me. Ian, I had a question about the uh, database stuff. So, yes. um, so I, I know SQLite is flat files, so you can just track it right in your repository with Git, which is really cool. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, um, the actual querying of that data is that only happening during CI? Like, by the time it actually gets to the client, is it just static HTML files at that point, or is the SQLite files actually being sent to the client in some kind of way? No, no, no. It's all happening. It's all happening. Um... Hold on one second here. It's all happening on my, well, actually on my VPS, which is running here. So um, let's see if I can. So yeah, it is definitely. So for example, um, yeah, so when you check an email, it passes it to this save method, for example, which saves it just by calling the SQL there. And then, um, there it is. So when it comes time to compile the replies, that's right, I make the SQL call. This is all happening on my, on my machine. And then it gets compiled into um, HTML, which is then just pushed up to Netlify without Netlify having to run a build command of any kind. Um, so you're doing the build completely outside of Netlify and just kind of transferring the assets. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, mainly to not have to pay for build minutes on Netlify. Yeah. <laughs> um, and probably if I was going to actually put this in production, I would probably use my, um, use my VPS to serve it directly rather than use a VPS to serve it directly rather than use Netlify. You're still serving static files using like Apache or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that way, you know, it would shorten the um, shorten the time of getting a comment up onto the screen. Yeah. Uh, getting more comments here Not on this one. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think if I have any other thoughts. I know I signed up to talk for half an hour, so... Uh, <laughs> If anyone else has any questions, I'd love to talk about it more. I, um, yeah. Or if not, that's okay too. Um, anyway, uh, like I said, you know, if anybody has any questions after the fact, feel free to leave a comment on the slide deck. Feel free to shoot me an email. Um, and likewise, you know, if, if you have any questions about car gurus or are interested in looking for work, as people often are at these meetups, I'm happy to answer any questions about that as well. well let me stop my screen share. <laughs> Yeah, I guess one other question I would have is yes, what would be the, so right now it seems like currently you'd have to run your VPS all the time to kind of wait for messages to, to come in. What I'm curious, like if there's another way you could save on server um, resources by like, I, I know like um, Heroku had a model where they'd spin down your servers until something like pinged it and then it would like spin it up and try to listen to it. Then is, is there a way you could have some kind of like monitoring to, to see those requests coming before you actually have to spin up resources to handle them? 
Um, well, I mean, you know, there's not much, ha if, if there's the first step that my, I mean, probably the first step my current script does is it checks for new emails. Mm -hmm. So if there are no new emails, first of all, nothing is happening. Okay. But the other thing is that because we're not actually worried about exposing ports, like I did it on the VPS just for convenience of being able to make sure that I could like SSH into it and not have to worry those kind of the issues. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it could also be on, you know, an old laptop running, you know, in the corner of a room or on a Raspberry Pi. Um, or even just, you know, if, like I said, if it was a really something that you really could be slow about, maybe you just run the build script, you know, in the morning when you turn your computer on. Um, and maybe that, you know, that might be enough for a tech blog or something like that. You know, if you're not getting that many. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You could like batch it daily or something like that. Make for sure. Sense. I mean, you know, the ideal pace, I don't really know what the ideal, probably if, if I was going to use the case of like a site that my mom was going to comment on, I probably wouldn't have it build more than once a day mm -hmm. to begin with. Um, right now I have it going every 90 seconds, but that's only because I want it. I was hoping that you know, if, if emails, that, if comments had come through that they would appear. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool. Yeah, cool. Any other questions? Comments, threats, concerns? <laughs> I was a little worried about scanning a stranger's QR code at first. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah, I, I never got it working. So I, I assume what it what's that, that's supposed to do is open up your email client with a pre-populated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Address. Was, yeah. There's Mom, a mail to link on the pages too. So for example, oh, okay. Um, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what, is, what is the email address? Just so folks can send oh. one if they want. Well, it changes per page. So oh, we're on, gotcha, uh, gotcha. I would say go to the, uh, you know, go to the URL, which I posted in the chat uh -huh. um, and just try it out on a page there. And I'll leave gotcha. this line and running for... Yeah. yeah yeah um it was honestly just an email um and it was specifically it said in the email like what slide it was for so I, like oh. so yeah so as i mentioned uh gmail has a feature where which is really cool too if you're ever signing up for a mailing list or something you yeah. put a plus sign after your username but before the at you can put any text after that mm -hmm. so um yeah. you know when you're using a system like this, the question becomes, how do I communicate like what post it's for? So that was just the model I used. But you could use the subject line. You could use metadata in the email. You know, the, the nice thing about doing this is that after eight hours at work, not eight hours, let's be realistic, but after being at work and, you know, the life of an enterprise front end dev involves a lot of, you know, calling this component library and, and this, this mm -hmm. function, you know, actually having to think about how to, how am I going to like make this communication layer work when there is no standard for that to me is much more exciting. Yeah, I completely agree. Like this, this is very exciting for me. I'm probably not going to do anything like this ever, but, but just like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I really just the, like what the way you described how email is just available to everyone. It doesn't like, that's the one thing that everyone gets and can use. Yeah. And, and to be able to just use an interface like that to to add values to a database and display it, like I'm pretty sure I'm going to be thinking about this a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You for create sure. your own segment here. You call it email ops or something like that. <laughs> yeah, this is a new industry. Yeah, I like <laughs> it. It's really in innovative. Yeah. Cool. That's it for me. Um, and and yeah, I have a very short talk too. So. Okay. Um, I don't know if I should like kind of just jump right into it or let's let's hop over. And thanks again, Ian. That was a great talk. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you.